My name is Dion Thomas Carmichael, and I am the owner and proprietor of Josephine's Lounge. I've lived in Cleveland all my life, and in the Fairfax area. Really have never really lived in another area other than Fairfax. My relationship with St. Adelbert's Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament started with Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament. That is the famous Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament. That was our home church. Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament is the oldest Roman Catholic African American parish in the state of Ohio. It's the second oldest in the entire United States. In the 50s, we needed a bigger church. The bishop decided that Our Lady of Blessed Sacrament should move over to where St. Adelbert's was. St. Adelbert would remain the patron saint, and Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament would be the secondary patron saint. This is the cradle of Catholicism in the black church. This was founded by and for black Catholics. In 2007, we started a cluster process in the Diocese of Cleveland. We got a new bishop and he was sent to, a lot of people say, closed churches. People were devastated when the church closed. I feel bad for any school that closes, any parish that closes. It's, it's seeing what occurred firsthand it's not something that I feel anybody should have to go through. Any black vocation that you see in Cleveland, every black sister, every black priest has their roots in this parish. Between the Precious Blood Priests and Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament nuns, we flourished. They just did a lot to nurture the spiritual emotional and financial growth of African Americans. I've been in the community since I attended school at Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament. I can remember uh, being sick as a child and the nuns embracing my mother and whatever they could do to help, you know, they were always there to do that. I felt like I could immediately bond with people. The parishioners were so inviting. They were very, very good people. Look at how thin this dude is here, man. He yeah. had nothing to eat. <laughs> yeah. He looked like he in shape. He looked a little bit like you. He thin like butter. Hey. But he needs some food. The very first time I went to church there, I felt like I was at home. I felt like I had always been there like I knew everybody, even though I didn't know anybody. I felt so welcomed. I felt like I'm home. It, it was that kind of parish. It was, it, was, it was easy to walk in and stay. I think that's what makes the Fairfax area so great. You can know people. You can know them and not even know them. You're not meeting a stranger. You're not gonna meet a stranger. We had been through a, a long process of uh, what they call clustering, where they were trying to combine some of the different churches in the area, so the shortage of priests and et cetera, was kind of the impetus for that. 2009, we were told that we would be suppressed. Please, please I, I'm gonna have to preface this by saying I am no canon lawyer or, or expert in church law. The term suppressed is a canonical term. There is one church of Cleveland. The Diocese of Cleveland is the church. So you don't close the church, you suppress it in one location. But for people, when you say church, to the people in any particular parish, Church is where they go on Sunday and it's their pastor and the people they sit next to and the, the people their kids go to school with. All politics is local politics. All church is parish. That's why a suppressing of a parish, it's, it's a wound. We had meetings with the bishop. He told me to my face, right, in one of these meetings. He says, Philip, I closed my mother's church. And I see, In Boston. I wouldn't have said that out. And, I, and she said that, and I told him, I said, I wouldn't close my mama's church. I said, my mother had to die for I closed the church. I wouldn't close my mother's church, especially if I'm the bishop. But he felt like he was right. People were threatening his life and all of that, and they were. But in the conversations, I came to believe that he really felt like he was right in doing what he did. When the churches started to close, 
it's because the people who were regularly there either were dead and have gone to their uh, heavenly reward, hopefully, or they moved out of the neighborhood for many reasons, I am sure. Maybe because they didn't need a big house. And then you look over here and say, they no longer have as many children as they used to, so they, they don't need the school. Or the, there are no more sisters to supply it because not many people are joining the convent these days. And, and see, so you look at all of those things, you know, and I'm not excusing or condemning it. I'm just saying that's what it is. That's what I, I uh, was able to see and hear and feel. People here were devastated when the church closed. I think it upset people in such a horrible way. They felt like they were almost betrayed or disconnected. To me, it was a done deal. I mean, Couldn't say it. Excuse Couldn't me. say it. Um, they put a padlock on our church. He insisted on doing the closing ceremony. People were angry. They were very, very angry. The police had to be there. And they chained the doors. So it was done in my mind. It was done. So, uh... I had to live with this lady that says, no, it's not over. Out of the 52 that were closed, 13 decided to appeal. We were the only African-American parish that decided to appeal. I couldn't accept that our church should close. So we pursued it. Now this is a Herculean task and everybody says, you're crazy, it's not gonna happen. If the bishop says it's closed, it's closed, and that's just the way it is. And some of us, were just stubborn enough to say, well, nothing beats a failure but a try, and so let's try it. We wrote letters, we sent documentation. Every time they asked for information, I sent them a letter responding to that letter with the letter, with the information that I had submitted previously, with the information that they were asking for again. So they had volumes of information from us. So much so that uh, Colonel Sambini wrote me a letter and said, we assure you, we have gotten your information. <laughs> As God would have it, the year of faith was 2012 and 2013. In March of 2012, we got the letter saying that we would reopen. The decision from Rome and from uh, the diocese to reopen, it was like that, it was sudden. When we finally really, really got the word that we were reopening, first disbelief, then happiness, then, okay, they're gonna change their mind. When that church reopened, uh, it was something where the whole community, I think, just brightened back up. The school went back in there, the statues were brought back in, the culture was re-engaged, it was all reignited in a way where you could see it. It was really something where, um, I don't know any other way to describe it other than it felt like such a huge positive energy had returned into the community. People came and scrubbed every inch of every, everything that didn't move, got cleaned and scrubbed and waxed and washed and prepared and how proud people wept for joy. There were people that were literally singing um, as they stood out in front of our church where it was such a happy and an, an inviting time. I remember there were flags that were hung on our uh, church. There were flags that were hanging on the fences that called it the miracle on 83rd Street. It was a miracle. It was like a resurrection. Oh Happy Day by the Edwin Hawkins Singers. That's the song that we sing, Oh Happy Day. <laughs> and she says, we, we, we. She did the paperwork. That's the reality. She did the paperwork. She wrote the bishops. She was the one that was responsible for us reopening. And uh, that's the kind of lady that I live with. I had seen a mural that a young lady named Chloe had done, and for, I, I was absolutely blown away that it was so beautiful. Miss Dion approached me and said, I want you to do a mural. She had seen the one at Magnificat, um, so I was very honored that she 
wanted me to do something to honor Santa Delberts. I talked to Chloe and uh, about several different types of, of uh, ideas and she said, okay, well, let's get, let me sketch something out. I'll sketch a couple of things and see if you like them. My job was to come up with a visual composition that we can use. And then Miss Dion decided it would be awesome to honor different founders of St. Adelbert's, really important leaders and people who have um, been connected to St. Adelbert's, as well as the people in that area. Yeah, a lot of the pictures Phyllis, I think, pulled from like archives and stuff that I collected. Oh, wow. Just made my day. Chloe, you are a magnificent Thank girl. You. Thank girl, you. Girl, give me them hands. <laughs> the girl is magnificent. She has, uh, she really has uh, a talent that is far beyond her age. And and I, I, I tell her, I, you know, I can't draw a blade of grass. So to be able to find someone that can draw uh, and produce just so such beautiful uh, artwork it's just amazing now the mural depicts the church as the hub that from the church flows the people into the community the church gives us our our spiritual food it feeds us you know it gives us our moral standing and it talks to us about what god expects us to do we are to come into the community and do his work. We are the workers. So the mural shows individuals from the community who have taken up that challenge and done just that. I was just very happy to kind of like use the fact that I know I have a skill that not many people have and I can use that skill to honor the vision that they wanted to portray. I think St. Adelbert's Our Lady of Blessed Sacrament has persevered through the years because of the spirituality that was planted by the missionaries of the precious blood and the, the sisters of the blessed sacrament. Those were the only priests that I knew. So in our two years of being Roman Catholics, we took that around with us, that same spirituality, that love of each other, and that desire to be Christ-like. And that, that I think is what sustained us. <laughs> God the Father tells you, the Holy Spirit helps you to move. Okay, get busy. You know what you have to do. And I think, I think that's what the Catholic Church does. It provides that, it provides the impetus for us to do what we know we need to do. Mm -hmm. mm. So, so great. That was beautiful. <laughs> the whole thing. The whole thing. Cool. What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can, we can, we'll what the hell did I say? So you don't, you don't uh, mess around on email and computer a lot? Or you do? No, she doesn't. Oh, you, I know you said, okay. But yeah, I'm sure you got grandkids. Look at that face! I know. Can you mail it to me? <laughs> <laughs>